Hey guys, welcome back. This is Lofi here, and today we are here for another restoration video. This one being of a GP40. This is going to be the first of three restorations coming out in the next few weeks here. And so this is an Athrin Blue Box unit. So it should be running pretty nice when we get it all fixed up. And hopefully there's nothing terribly wrong with it because it's a pretty sturdy model to begin with. So let's test it out right now, setting it in forwards. And it starts up at a decent voltage. It's not the greatest running quality right now. And occasionally from what some light testing yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it needs just a little bit of a push to start or something. So yeah, it's obviously not running as well as some of my other fully cleaned up models. So let's get this one over onto the workstation. All right, now let's crack open this locomotive here. So I'll just try to get a screwdriver underneath. <clears throat> try to pull up on these little tabs here. It's my first time with a GP40 locomotive, but not my first time with an Atherin Blue Box style. Right, the other pin. I think I can just get this on my fingers. Yeah, there we go. All right, shell is off. I will go off camera and clean this up so I mean this is a pretty basic I'll just scrub it down a little bit and try not to rip any of the paint off but yeah just clean up some of the dust and things like that but the shell isn't too terribly dirty so I'm just gonna set this out of shot all right here is our engine and the first thing I noticed even when I bought it is that its motor is loose and kind of flopping around inside here and also, when it was running earlier, the light was not on, so I'll try to see if I can investigate that. We'll adjust the angle a little bit here. And so it's got a lot of fuzz. I don't know if you can see that sticking up. And there's a lot of fuzz and gunk and grime up in here. And so let's just first get to open it all up. And so first things first, I'm gonna actually remove the motor because right now it's being held by Sticky Tack. So the previous owner, must have put that on. So I'll get that cleaned up, so we'll set this off to the side. There you go. All right, now let's open up these truck covers and clean up whatever lies inside of here. So very similar to the shell. I just wanna get a screwdriver this time. I'm gonna go for a smaller one and just weasel it in there. I find once you get a flathead in there, then normally if you twist, sometimes that helps, but sometimes it's a little finicky still. There we go. One side. And... Ah. <laughs> Try not to be that aggressive. <laughs> but here's our first set open. I'll go ahead and get the second set open as well as the wheels just taken out. Okay, I can't take the wheels out. I thought I could. There we go. Oh. Some of the older Ethanol Blue Boxes, the little axle bits are stuck in so you can't get the wheels fully out. Now I'm going to set this off to the side so we can clean the wheels here. So I'll get all that stuff ready and I'll clean the body just off camera here. All right, now for cleaning wheels, the way I normally do, and it seems to work pretty effectively, is to take a track bright or a track cleaner. So normally something that I use to scrape the rails, as you can see, you can see, and that's what I use it for. And then on the other side here, I just take the wheel and I just scrape away any gunk that's on it as I watch the wheels roll off the table. And so that cleans it up a decent amount. You still gotta clean up some of the little rubber bits, but I do that for about a minute per wheel and then I'll switch to the other, slowly rotating as I scrub to make sure I get all the way around it. And so that's how I normally do it. So I'm gonna do that just off camera here so you guys don't have to watch me scrubbing back and forth this entire time. So we'll get to that now. All right now, just kind of as a little way to see, you can see this is sides the clean wheel, this side's the dirty wheel. You can see which reflects the light more, even when I flip them over. You see how about 30 seconds and as you slowly rotate it, you clean off a lot of the surface gunk. And so these steel wheels on these Atherin models 
just accumulate this over time. So there's nothing you can really do to stop it aside from just cleaning them regularly. All right, now we got the wheels all cleaned up. So I'm just gonna set these off to the side here. And now next, we're gonna need to disconnect the trucks off. And so once you just take them off, they come in three parts. And so I'll show you guys how to do that really here. So flathead, gotta get, stick it all the way up and through until you are underneath the little cover by the worm gear and pull off to the side a little bit because that cover is only held on by two little clips. There you go. Covers off, worm gear comes off, and this comes off. All right, now it's time to remove a lot of that hair, gunk, and grime that you guys can see on there. Another step you can do if you want to get fully inside the truck is to remove this little piece here. Now I can, I think I, earlier I removed it with just my fingers, there we go. Pops off, you can pop it back on later once you put it back together, but this just opens up the truck and so it's easy to pick out the little pieces of hair as well, especially underneath a lot of these gears. They got some hair and stuff underneath them. Another thing you can do is if it's incredibly dirty on the inside, you can just wipe this all up with a Q-tip, get rid of the oil, the oiled oil. And so this one didn't have much oil in the first place, so this will be nice to lubricate it. Make sure not to leave any fuzz hairs or anything behind. And so to lubricate this loco, I'm gonna be using some lithium grease. And so I'm gonna put some on the inside, on then on the teeth of the gears, and then on the outside of the gears. I only just use a toothpick to apply a little bit. And we can stick the gears in. Goes big gear, small gear, then another big gear. the outsides and then I'm going to go on to the teeth and once you get this locomotive up and running you can it'll spread around the, ge the grease a lot more and so you don't have to worry right now about it being a massive clumps as long as you just spin it for a little while and immediately don't put it under a lot of load and there you go it's spreading into the teeth now and so I put some on this face here, so I can just snap the frame back on. Make sure I get that little hair, eyelash hair looking thing. Just make sure to be careful while snapping this on to make sure all the gears stay in place. Now, yeah. that is together. Take the little cover. And if you can do it right, you can just Click it back together for now. And with the worm gear, when you go to put it back on the locomotive, I'll show in a second, you gotta thread everything right so you can't just stick the worm gear back on right now. So right now I'm gonna clean up the other side since I haven't opened that up yet. And I'll get back to you guys then. All right, now I got both of them lubricated up. And one thing I did forget to mention earlier is that the lithium grease that I get is just from a uh, hardware store near me and so I mean I think I found it in a few other hardware stores so I don't think it's that hard to find mine just comes in a giant like squeeze tube and I just hold it in a smaller container so it's easier to use with the toothpick and so now let's get these back on worm gear always faces the outside and so this little tab is on the inside. Make sure I got this one in right. It might be a little hard to get the square bearings to sit flat when the first time you stick it back in. Okay, I got one of them. I just need to get the other. There we go. All right, they're both sitting in there. Now it's just waiting 
for me to put this piece back in because this locks it onto the bogey or the mounting point. Let's click back in, do that to the other side now. This side should be easier because there's no bar for the light in the way. Yep. Oop. Almost put it in the almost put it in backwards. And so the nice thing about these smaller Atherin Blue Box locomotives is that you don't have to worry about these uh, shafts for the U-joint going loose or just them being lost in general, because some of the larger locomotives, they're not permanently attached like that. That's in, click this back on top. There we go. All right, now I will be putting a little bit of LaBelle 102 on the ends of the U-joint, just out of reach here. You can find this at most model shops, just right in here in the end. Just on the bearing so it rolls a little smoother. I'll put one on the inside each. It's a little dark so it's hard to see, but I'm just putting it on the little brass piece on the inside. There we go. All right now, I think it's time we can fit the wheels back in and we'll look at the motor next after that. Fitting the wheels is pretty simple. You just make sure you got the square bearings lined up. Yeah, see this one's not lined up right there. There we go, okay. Then after the lined up, they should just drop in. Lined up one, but then I lost the other. There we go. Two more. There we go. That's in. Last one. All right. Now you can just put these clip pieces that you took off earlier just back in. You just press them down, they click in. Here, once they both snap, they're done. All right, we're now done with the chassis. And so let's go take a look at the motor now. All right, now let's take a look at the motor here. I already got the sticky tech stuff mostly cleaned up. I can get that off later, or the rest of it off later. So the first thing we wanna take a look at here is the commutator. And so there are three ways that I know of, of cleaning the commutator. One is Q-tips, which are not the greatest. They don't have the most friction, so, and they might leave some fuzz behind. Two is a fiberglass pencil. That's probably the best thing that you have. I don't have one of those on me. And so, I, mean, I think they're like 10 bucks on Amazon or something like that. And then third, a uh, viewer told me about erasers. And so you just gotta make sure you clean up the fuzz afterward, but I'm gonna set the pencil down. And so as long as they're not terribly old erasers, they should do fine. But you can see where it's dark and then you can see where it's lighter a little bit. And it's a little bit more noticeable in person here, the change, but I've just been scraping down with the eraser a little bit. And another thing you want to do when you're cleaning the commutator here is clean the little gaps between the motor. Clean those because you don't, those might cause a short circuit or something in there. And so now I'm gonna scrub this down with the eraser. And so I'll see you guys then. All right, now I've spent about two minutes wiping down the commutator with an eraser. And so I've made sure to get the little bits out by blowing and make sure they're getting out. But now I'm gonna clean the little gaps in between using a little colorful toothpick here. And yeah, so there's not much gunk in between the cracks here, which is nice. If you use something harder than a plastic or wooden toothpick, for example, if I used a screwdriver, you might leave a dent or a little 
bit that will slowly eat away at the commutators because this is some softer copper so it's easy to scratch it or make a mark on it. So that's why softer things do so well at cleaning it because harder things will just scrape and wreck it. And sometimes it doesn't hurt to go back and hit some areas twice just to make sure you got them. All right, there we go. Got it all cleaned up. I will lubricate the U-joints here and then I'll lubricate down at this end of the motor, but I'm not going to lubricate close to the commutator because sometimes that oil can get onto the commutator and burn and smell. It smells very pungent and funky, so you know you spilt something on it then. But so now let's oil back out. U-joints are a little stiff. So hopefully we'll loosen them up a little bit. And then down here at this bearing. Spin to make sure it spreads evenly. Now on to mounting the motor. You wanna make sure it goes in the right place. All these things that I've serviced, you can service with the motor still in place. So if you have a model, don't take your motor out. And so it originally was glued down onto these little points here. So I'm just gonna put a dab of glue onto the little feet here, making sure not to get it onto this copper bit because this copper connects to this little channel here and it picks up power off the outside of the body. So I got some Gorilla Glitter Glue. Shake it up a little bit. And I'm gonna apply that now, make sure I don't. There we go. I've used this for a few other model projects. Clear super glue. And so I'm just gonna put a little bit on two of the feet in case I do it wrong. It still should have a strong enough connection. There. All right, close that up so it doesn't cause any other issues. Now make sure I have the motor the right way. And you want to plug in these little U-joint pieces. Sometimes it can be a bit of a hassle especially with a light piece in your way. Because they only, they have a little notch. It's a little notch. And they only lock in one way. So sometimes you just gotta hold it and spin it there. Try to get the rear first. Or it'll fire off. If you ever do lose a U-joint piece like this, and they fire off, just stick it back in, should just fit over the ball. There we go, got that one in. Time to get the other in. There we go, okay. They're both locked in. Set the motor down onto the glue here. I am just going to apply some pressure here, make sure that it all dries up. So I'll just cut here, I'll get back to you guys later. All right, now it's been a while, I've let the glue dry and I've also put the bar back on top. You just gotta slide that back in. Make sure that's touching the little tabs. So now let's test this locomotive and see if it's running. All right, now we got it on the tracks here. And so I don't have any way to fix the light or anything. So that'll just be an issue for another day. But let's see if the engine's running and see in forwards here, slowly turn up. You can see it turning over slowly. Okay, it stopped. There you go. It was, I don't know if the camera's picking that up right, but it's yeah, turning really slow. Okay. I guess in forward or yeah, forwards actually first. All right, now let's try. Ah, get my words mixed up. All 
All right, there we are. I think it's running back in normal state here. It's running about as well as my other Atherin locomotives. And I'm just gonna let that oil and stuff set in a little bit. All right, now let's get the shell back on the loco. All right, before we get the body on, I realized something I did wrong. And I mean, I've never stumbled upon it before. I guess I've gotten lucky, but uh, I put the these pieces on the wrong side. So the locomotive was going in reverse directions of what the controller was telling it to. And so that was kind of why I was confused back there when it was running. But now I'm putting them on the correct side here. I'm gonna click this one in. I think that's the issue. If not, you guys will see later. Make sure it's set in right. There. There we go. One side. Let's get the other. I also learned another lesson from this about how to easily install things without the motor going all floppy. If you just keep the worm gears and the U-joints plugged in, you don't have to deal with that issue of, you saw me earlier, trying to hook the motor up. Slipped out of my fingers. There. Let's put the cover back on. All right, let's go back over and test the locomotive again. See if I got it rewired back up right. All right, now back over to the testing area. See, going it forwards. All right, forwards is forwards, reverse is reverse. Now we can put the shell back on. Now time to put the shell back on. It's pretty simple. So I think this shell is, there's no other little areas it latches aside from the little ball down here. Just push down, there you go. Locked in both sides. Local one's ready to go. I do not have a coupler box for the front here, so I can't do anything with that. It's already got its horns attached. And I did throw a coupler on the rear already. I think I did that in the haul video where I got it. But when I got it, now let's get this locomotive pulling the train with another Southern Pacific locomotive. All right, now let's see if our locomotive can back up and hook up to its train effectively here. If not, we got more issues here. Let's see how slow it can go. Let's couple up. All right, it is. I will get the caboose onto its train next to it, and then we'll send them both off. All right, Sun Pacific GP40 off. And, oops, a little fast. There. Now I'll set our next one off. All right, now let's get some shots of these engines running around the layout. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you should know that I have a Southern Pacific Alco PA unit, and that is also an after and blue box unit. And I do have a restoration with this locomotive, and also I'll just put it up in the iCart for you guys. And so after restoring the GP40, one thing I've really noticed is that it's a lot quieter than even the Alco PA unit, because most of the noise you guys are hearing is coming from that unit. And so it's a shame I couldn't fix the headlight because I don't have the stuff for that, but it's turned into a really nice runner and it's really nice and quiet. And we'll let the Alco pass by here. And, and so if you notice, it is running with the Santa Fe Caboose. So if you know, you know. All right, now let's get this one last shot and then we'll see if we can park both locomotives in shot.
All right, now let's see if we can stop both locomotives. And they are actually approaching at about a similar time. Ran through a little quick with the Alco. There we go. And stopped a little bit short with the GP40. But now let's go on to the conclusion of this restoration video. All right, now we're at the end of this restoration video. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching and making it to this point. In this video, we cleaned the commutator, cleaned the wheels, cleaned off the old oil and hair and all that gunk inside of there. I also off camera cleaned the little uh, contact points and all that. They weren't terribly dirty, so I didn't really make a note of it. Uh, we couldn't fix the light and I don't have the stuff for a new horn hook coupler at the front and I'm out of knuckle couplers, so I couldn't swap those in this time. But we got the locomotive to run a lot quieter and a lot smoother, so it wasn't cutting out and stopping. And so I think this locomotive is in a way better state than what it started with, although it wasn't terrible to begin with. And so I'd like to thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.